in the way. Okay. Hi, friends. How are you? Good. Well, this lights are bright. Let me just set to the side. Okay. So today, I have the pleasure of introducing two fine gentlemen that work with Rockridge University. Our first friend of the night is Frank Scalise. Did I say that right? Scalise? Scalise? Yes? Okay. No. I want to learn. You're going to teach me. Um, he currently serves as Director of Male Services for Rutgers University and has over 20 years of experience in both in the field. Rutgers University, Rutgers Male Services handles mail and packages for both students and staff on the Rutgers New Brunswick, Newark, and RBHS campuses. Prior to managing mail services for Rutgers, Frank managed the office, office service for a large blue chip uh, law firm with international and domestic offices. Following Frank, is our friend David Erickson. He currently serves as the Assistant Manager of Mail Services where he manages the student mail operation and has over 18 years of experience in the mailing industry. Prior to working with Rutgers, David worked in the Customer Service Division of one of the largest, or excuse me, one of the country's leading mail services companies. So let's give them both a round of applause and a good luck. Hello. So, who thinks about mail on a daily basis? No, well, it's very few. But um, students order a lot of packages. So, right? So, this is their only way to get packages and to send out packages. Same thing with mail. Um, Give me one second. Okay. There it is. What is mail services? We process mail and packages for students and departments for the New Brunswick and Newark campuses. We have three receiving and processing locations, five student post offices, and 37 locker banks. You will, we're going to show you how a locker bank works uh, during the tour. Um, it is an automated locker bank for students, so they don't have to physically go and deal with someone to get their mail. Uh, mail and packages are put into the locker bank, and an email is sent to them saying you have something in this locker bank, and then they can go 24/7 to pick up their their items. We employ nine full-time customer service representatives and part-time student employees to work at the student post offices and the processing centers. For the academic year 2016-17, we process 380,000 items and we uh, have a typical growth rate of approximately 30% year over year. That is just for students. Mm -hmm. Doesn't include the staff package. <laughs> so what, what services do we provide? Processing and delivering of student mail packages to a student post office and, and an automated locker system. Assistance with sending and receiving mail and packages. Postal <coughs> kiosks and <coughs> vending machines to purchase postage. So instead of going to a customer service window or a, or a counter, uh, the student could go to the postal kiosk and buy a, one stamp, buy a sheet of stamps, or just weigh their package and the machine will print out the postage for them. Uh, USPS Priority Mail Shipping Supplies, which we offer for free. Uh, students do not have to pay for those, um, and we provide those. For them. Uh, researching missing and undelivered items. So if a student has a problem with a package, did not get here from Amazon, we will help them find the package. Here's a picture of what the automated locker system looks like. We'll go outside with the tour. We'll actually see one face to face. So I'll show you how the system works as, as well. And then the, the mail and go kiosk and the stamp vending machine. Uh, some kids you know, don't carry credit cards, so we have an option for them to use good old quarters to buy some stamps. Student packages are delivered to one of our receiving centers where they are sorted by campus, processed, and staged to delivery to the student post office. Because the university is cut by a river, it is serviced by two separate post offices, because it has two separate zip codes. So we have two processing centers on each one on each side of the river. At the student post office, the information on the labels is verified to make sure there are no errors and that a package is in at, the, at correct. the correct student post office. So when we put it into our tracking system, we put an additional label on that. 
that we double check to make sure that we're not giving the package to, let's say there's Joe Smith, but there's three Joe Smiths. We make sure we give it to the right Joe Smith. The package is delivered to one of the locker banks and the student is notified by email that they have a package waiting for them in the locker system. This process can take anywhere from an hour to a, to a day depending on the incoming volume of, and locker availability. Since we only have nine full-time employees and 68,000 students, depends on, so the, the beginning of the semesters are a lot heavier than the middle of the semester. The month of September alone was 68,000 items. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Student mail process, similar to the package process, the student mail is delivered to one of our receiving centers where it is then sorted by campus and then the mail is delivered to the student post office where the customer service reps will process it in our tracking system and at that time the student will receive an email notification letting them know that they have a piece of mail to pick up. <coughs> student retrieves their mail from the customer service window. The important information. All items must be addressed properly with the name of, and the name the student registered with and their assigned campus address in order to ensure the efficient processing of daily items. So if, if your name is Joe Smith and you put Bruce Lee on the package, you're not gonna get it. Because in our system, Bruce Lee does not exist. All uh, matriculating students can use the system. If the student is not in Rutgers housing, they must contact, contact us to set up the service. So we have a lot of students that just live right off of campus. And we want to give them the same capabilities of the students who live on campus. It was a nice and short presentation. It's like plot twist. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Where do most of the boxes come from? The packages come from? Amazon. Really? <laughs> yes. Amazon. And we do have, uh, we are in contact with the um, warehouses and we know them on a first name basis. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a contact at corporate office in Seattle. When I have problems, I call them directly. So what if we want to send um, a care package to our child? Okay, so you have to put the your student's name mm -hmm. and then the address is unique to each student. So the, their, their four digit address is the last four digits of their ID number mm -hmm. and then the campus they live on. And then the town. So we have New Brunswick and we have the yeah. right. After this slide, I have some examples of how the addresses should be formatted. Oh, so that'll change? Does it, like, if they live on Livingston this year and on Bush the next year, it'll change? Yes, that'll change. From LPO yes. to BPO? Yes, yes ma'am. So that will change automatically in our system. We have a, a, a feed from housing that, that gets updated every week. Yes? So the student lives on the campus. Do the six students use the same main services? And which, which I'm saying, so if they live off campus, yes, they can use the system. They will need to reach out to us. They will not automatically be added to our tracking system because we, that information comes from housing files. But if they contact us through our email, we can work them through the process of getting them registered and set up to receive mail. The locker system, the, the students are required to sign up for notifications from the locker system. Uh, that gives us the opportunity for, or gives them the opportunity to choose what email address they want those notifications to go to so that we can make sure that they get them. Uh, that information is all available on our website and, and we provide it to them at the customer service window. And it's also in the housing packets that go home um, when they're assigned uh, uh, a campus. Another important item is perishable items. Uh, we'll, we do accept deliveries of perishable items from birthday cakes to flowers to food from Amazon Fresh or whatever. Omaha steaks. Omaha steaks, yes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we do not have the facilities to safeguard those products. We do not have refrigerators in the post office or anything. So we do reach out to the student as quickly as possible if they have something like that to make sure they know it's urgent that they come over and pick it up as quickly as possible. What if the student doesn't pick it up? Sure then, then it spoils and unfortunately... No, I'm just I'm saying other, other things. Like, do you just hold it? Like, um, so, so we, that's actually my next bullet point here. Mm -hmm. Items stay in the locker system for a minimum of 72 hours. 
after that 72 hour period, we will remove it from the locker to make room for new packages to go into the locker. Um, at that time, it's held at the customer service window of their, of their student post office. We did, if they do not pick it up before the end of the semester, we return the items or forward them to their home address. The lockers are accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Unclaimed items are returned to center or forward home at the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. We do this, so out of, uh, we are the only Big Ten school that has uh, that keeps packages for a semester. The uh, the next highest is a month, and that's Ohio State. Some examples of how to address a student's package. Say the student lived on Bush Post Office. Would be one, two, three, four, BPOA, whatever the last four digits of their ID number is. BPOA, Piscataway, New Jersey, 08854. If they lived on one of the New Brunswick campuses, it would be RPOA or CPOA or DPOA. New Brunswick, New Jersey, 08901. <coughs> Our contact information. So our contact information is the best way to contact us. Of course, we don't have a lot of staff. And email is, is the best way. So we answer all our emails within a 24-hour period. Um, all the emails go to all the management, myself included, um, and I make sure that everything is answered within a 24-hour period. I actually watch my phone all weekend long, and I make sure I respond to emails. <laughs> Questions? Yes, ma'am. So can you clarify the difference between like DPO or RPO and that sort of thing? Absolutely. How do you know? DPO is for Bush Post Office, for Bush Campus. Um, CPO is Cook Post Office. DPO is Douglas Post Office. LPO is Livingston Post Office. And the confusing one is RPO. RPO is the College Ave Campus. The reason it's called RPO is it's the main location where Rutgers first started. It's referred to as Rutgers Post Office. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. Our standard operating hours are 9:30 to 5 for the campus post offices. Mm -hmm. um, the receiving centers. We do have staff that comes in earlier than that and they'll start working on the items. We also have to, to meet the demand during the peak times. We have our customer service reps will work overtime. They'll stay late and, and get as many packages into the lockers as, as, as possible every day. Mm -hmm. Work on weekends, nights, sometimes multiple trips back after, after dinner. Yes. Mm -hmm. We do everything we can to get it into the locker as quickly as possible. <laughs> Sir, if the item is expensive and it's damaged, what's the procedure? So, if it's damaged, the, the student it's either we um, we give it back to UPS, but we won't accept it, or we'll contact the uh, the student before we even process it and say this is came in damaged. Here are the pictures because everything is is on their video cameras, mm -hmm. um, and you can either reject it or you could call. Amazon, I'm just using an example to tell them that it came in damaged. There was a question over here, yes sir. If the student is not opening the locker or picking the mail at the first notification, do you send reminders or something? Yes, a reminder will go every uh, every day for the first three days. And then the item will be expired and removed from the locker. If we remove it from the locker, they will receive an email notification telling them that the package that was delivered on Monday was removed and that they need to go to the customer service window to pick it up. Yes, ma'am. Are there 37 lockers dispersed amongst the different campuses? Uh, yes, ma'am. They're split up. Uh, the Bush campus has nine locker banks. Uh, the picture that we had of the... There we go. This is what we would refer to as one locker bank. So there are nine individual locker banks on the Bush campus, nine individual locker banks on the Livingston campus, six on the College AF campus, 
and three apiece on the Cook campus, campus and Douglas campus. And then we have locker banks, six, um, yeah, six or seven locker banks up in the north, which are actually located inside the dorm buildings. Natasha. If my student, um, wanted to, you said talk about like you employ students, they were interested in getting a job with you all, because I don't want to pay for their stuff anymore, <laughs> who, who do they contact? So you email our contact um, email, and we will get back to you about that. We have, um, so every every semester, students graduate or leave the school, and then we have to fill those things. Yeah, we have turnover every semester. <laughs> I want to go back to that email contact. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Anybody else? So we do have parents contacting us too, asking questions, and we will help you as much as we can. You have a motto? A motto? Yeah. No, we, no, we do not. <laughs> yeah. We should come up with one. <laughs> You've got math. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we either snow in our sleep or heat. <laughs> That's right. We do deliver um, to the lockers all year long, no matter what the weather is. Yes. So because we do the staff side, we do not close. So we're not closing the summer or we're not closed during breaks or anything like that. So we, we're here. Yes. Yes. Do you have students also working in the summer? Yes, I do. Not as many, um, but I do have them working in the summer. Does that that is full time. It's it's well because they're student workers, they're allowed to work 20 hours a week. Um, so 20 hours a week would be full time. But yeah, I do. Uh, that is when we get our off project stuff. So they're not just working on mail. They're going to be working on a bunch of different projects. Okay. No, 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 no painting. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, like, um, upgrades to the locker system, um, additions to the lockers. This past summer, we added um, five new locker banks to um, various campuses. Uh, we did software upgrades on the lockers uh, during the winter break mm -hmm. last year. So, you know, we, we do all of our little projects to enhance our services during the summer months. Yes, ma'am. You said you have nine on Russian Lion living. Yes, ma'am. Like, how do kids know which one to go to? The email that they receive will tell them you've received an item. It's located in Livingston Locker Bank number three. Also, so me. they'll walk up to Locker Bank number three. They'll swipe their ID right. card and retrieve. Well, how will they know where three is? Just automatically. They're all numbered. They have numbers on the end. Like if you saw on the picture of the one that I showed, there was the, right up above the the touch screen. There was a number one. That was Locker Bank number one at the Cook Post Office. The emails also tell you where they are. So, oh, like the bush, like right, right. So the bush ones are in the rear of the student center, oh, and it'll so say it that on the bottom. Right. Yes, right. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Livingston, I have um, eight of my locker banks on Livingston, <coughs> lo located outside of the building. The ninth one that we just added during the summer, we added inside the building by the customer service window. So the, the email will actually say located inside Tillett Hall near the customer service window. So yeah, we, we try to guide them as closely as possible um, to the. Why did I just call my number? No. Yeah, no. No, they they know it's Livingston Locker yeah, Bank yeah. One, so they go to Livingston <laughs> Campus. Fortunately, they walk past them most of the time, um, especially Livingston Campus. While well, they're walking between Tillett Hall and the Lucy Stone Hall, they see them, um, so that they stand out. They're hot to miss. Yes. So I can't believe you have so many packages in here. My yeah. son oh, lives there. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You had a question. Um, so my student lives on Bush campus. Yes, ma'am. So if uh, it would go to either one. Like, no, it would go to Bush. It would go, it to, would Bush. go to yeah. Okay. Yes. Our, our processing center for the Bush campus packages mm -hmm. is located on the Livingston campus. That's where all deliveries come in. It's our sorting and processing center. Okay. We'll process the packages there and then transfer them over to the Bush campus so that they can be delivered to the lockers. Mm -hmm. Packages that are delivered before a break, like we have Thanksgiving break is coming up, we're going to be closed on that Friday. 
anything that's delivered to the lockers up until that, the end of the day, Wednesday, Stays will remain in those lockers until we return from the break. So as soon as they would come out of the locker is that following Monday. Same thing with weekends. We do not stand up <coughs> normally work on weekends. So anything delivered on, say, a Thursday or a Friday is going to stay in those lockers until Monday morning. Do you do any kind of delivery to the address itself? No. No. We are not allowed where any of the student dorms are. Um, we do this for safety for the student and for the, for the staff member. So no, we do not deliver. We do not deliver to your dorm rooms. We don't. We don't. We're not helping you up, bringing anything up to your room. None of that. Obviously. Yes. What if a package that's delivered is too big for the locker? Okay, so those are considered oversized packages. Okay, so um, those packages are processed and delivered to the customer service window on your student's campus. They will have to go to the customer service window to pick it up. Okay, now we do have a weight restriction because they are union members. So anything that's over 70 pounds or needs two people to pick up will stay at the processing center um, and then the student will have to make arrangements to pick that up. We don't get too many items. Yes, sir? What about booze or alcohol? Does that come through? <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, we do not care no, what you no. order. <laughs> uh, you could case. order whatever you want. We do not police. If they can legally the have it shipped here, we will receive it and right. deliver it to the locker. They still have regulations in the residence halls, though. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't you yes. worry. <laughs> we do not police what, what people order. Someone ordered a chainsaw the other day. I don't know what it's for. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> Car bumpers, tires, <laughs> you name it, we, it Six comes through. Smokers. <laughs> the barbecue smoke? Yes. Yes. Bunk beds, <laughs> futons. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. The, you'd be surprised what some of the students will order. <laughs> and the one, with the one student, he's a RA this year, so he's got a nice big room all to himself, and it was empty with just his bed and dresser, so he ordered a futon with a bunk up bed above it. <laughs> That's my son. <laughs> <laughs> he lives on Livingston? <laughs> yep. So, it, uh, I have car bumpers, you know, the big plastic front cover for the newer modern cars. One of those came in, it, it was seven mm -hmm. feet long in the packaging. Wow. <laughs> An engine block, a kid was rebuilding his, his car engine, he ordered a whole short block. And, and yeah. Heavy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. That was heavy. Interesting. Yes. It's very interesting. Any last questions? <laughs>